Hello, my name is Jeff Matei, and I'm a second year MBA student as well as a Center for Digital Strategies MBA fellow here at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome John Gehring, Vice President of Vian Corporation from Washington, D.C., who is joining us today as part of the Center's Corporate Roundtable Anniversary, as well as part of the BRIT Technology Impact Series. Uh, welcome to Tuck, John, and thanks a lot for being here with us today. Thank you. I've really enjoyed my stay here. Great. Um, John, for those who might not be familiar, uh, would you mind speaking a little bit about Vion and your role there? Vion is a privately held small business. It's been in existence for 31 years. It is a hardware integrator and a, a reseller of, of uh, mainly storage equipment for data centers. Uh, my role is um, in what is a concept called capacity on demand, where we provide uh, storage and server capacity in a data center as a utility, as a service that means that the data center owner does not have to buy the equipment and, and put the, the large capital outlays out uh, and can pay for the storage on demand, scale it up, scale it down as is needed and pay only for what's used. Oh, wow. So that's my job is to, um, to evangelize that, actually. Great. So those who are watching who may not know, uh, you were the formerly the CIO of DISA, the Defense Information Systems Agency. Uh, can you speak a little bit about DISA and uh, what goes on there? DISA is a... Uh, is a joint organization. Um, that means it's composed of all of services. Um, it is the uh, agency that provides pretty much the defense information technology infrastructure for the department. It, it has the global network that allows the four military services, the defense agencies, the combatant commands to connect and talk to each other, and it has large data centers that carry most of the heavy duty data processing for the department. So if you look at it, it's like the Verizon and AT&T and maybe the Google of the Department of Defense. And it's about, um, about 8,000 people and around $8 billion in revenue or in, in budget, six of which, six billion of which is, um, comes from customers. It's fee for service okay. for the network and for data centers. A theme this year has been cloud computing, uh, off-premises data. Uh, there are a lot of concerns around that for security, also for latency and reliability. And I'm sure in the defense industry, those, uh, those concerns are even amplified more. Uh, what are your kind of thoughts around those as your customers, uh, you know, government customers? Well, I smile because I don't know how many hundreds of vendor visits I had in the 13 years I was in DISA, but uh, in one stretch of uh, 18 months, I had 78 mm -hmm. uh, with my boss. Everybody came to us in the last three years with a cloud solution. And uh, my personal view is that there is no such thing as a cloud. The cloud is a concept for information sharing and collaboration. In fact, for the Department of Defense, I'd boil it down to one, one sentence. The cloud enables a military organization unit to connect to the network, identify itself, discover and share information, collaborate with whomever for the mission at hand, be it a disaster relief, be it the war in Afghanistan, be it missile defense, whatever, and to do so safely and securely. Beyond that, uh, it is a series of technologies, of techniques, of software, uh, of services that allow that to happen. It's not a thing. This concept is uh, driven by two sets of imperatives. The first is the operational, and the second is the efficiency. And I think it's a mistake to approach the cloud as a cost saving only, uh, or even primarily. The cloud first enables whoever is using it to do its job, its mission, be it, a, uh, be it using a, a CRM tool uh, that Salesforce.com provides, be it using a storage environment in Amazon's cloud, or being using Google Apps, whatever, or using the DISA infrastructure, the cloud has to enable first the mission, the operation, the business to succeed. So it's, it's driven by the need, in the military's case, to collaborate and share uh, with whomever for the mission at hand. As a former CIO, how do you see the role of the chief information officer shifting as we go about basically moving to these types of solutions? Well, I'm a, I'm a fan of the adage, when you're a hammer, all problems look like nails. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm afraid we're a little stitched in our ways of doing business. Uh, 
we, we, we tend to apply the same kinds of solutions today that we did a few years ago and that we, that we will apply in the future even though they are not suited to the challenges we face. You know, the CIO uh, was born of the, um, the evolution from the old mainframe glass house through client server distributed processing now back to this single cloud that some people call a software mainframe. Um, and the CIO was, was, was born of that to help govern the investment spending on IT, to help govern the security, the rules of use, uh, and to help provision uh, the network to support the company or whatever. Uh, today, most of what the CIO used to do, worry about buying servers and storage and software, most of that, a good portion of it, is not commoditized. And you can go to um, a capacity on demand model like we have where you don't have to buy the equipment anymore. You can go to a cloud to provide some kind of your processing or storage where you don't have to do it yourself. Um, you can get on demand network bandwidth, you can get on demand storage, on demand processing, and you can, you can source, I won't use the word outsource, you can source some of your work to a salesforce.com like organization. Now, do you still have the same control? No. Uh, what, but you've got to think about what it is, what effects we're trying to cause today. We're still trying to enable businesses, and enable government agencies, enable enterprises to do what they have to do, discover, collaborate, and share, and, and do transactions. I'm afraid that all our rules are stitched in the way we've done business for years. So we don't have a good and facile way of taking on the new ways of doing business like using elements of what people call the cloud, like using sourcing that's different than buying a box. Um, you know, if you think about it, you know, I'll say this in the defense department, in the state governments I've talked to, in the universities I've talked to, and the city governments I've talked to. If it's a box, people want to buy it. That's just the way we do with business. Um, and today you can acquire that same capacity with operating dollars and not use capital and not buy anything. Um, the trust relationships, uh, you know, uh, most people still suffer from uh, what I call box hugging, disease of box hugging. It can be terminal. I have to have the box. I have to own it. I have I to have understand to it. it. Yeah. You know, and I'll tell you, um, my favorite story is when I buy a book uh, on Amazon, a Kindle book, I go on the network for my laptop and I log on and, and uh, go on Amazon, it recognizes me by my, my email address and tells me what John likes to read, what John has bought, and those kinds of things. A lot of BI behind that, business intelligence. And then I click what I want, I put it in my shopping cart, I hit finish and pay, verify my credit card number, and I'm done. It's just you know, a handful of clicks. And frankly, what's behind the glass screen in my laptop, I don't care about. I care that I protect, they protect my identity and my credit card number, and I get the book I ordered. And it gives you convenience. Now, beyond that, I don't care. I come to work, and all that stuff behind the glass becomes important because people suffer from terminal box hugging itis. And that is, uh, that is anathema to the concept of shared services and cloud. Um, and CIOs have got to be in a position of breaking that and accepting that this is a change. If we don't do something different as CIOs, we will become irrelevant. One of the concerns is that the processes are so stiff and stodgy that people um, in companies just use what they can. Marketing goes off and develops its own applications because they can, they're better and faster, they can do things in weeks and not months. And the CIO sits there and goes, tis, 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 shame on you, you're not following the rules. Um, engineering does the same thing. But the CIOs now have to embrace that. You know, again, when we talked about the consumerization of IT, uh, one CEO I heard speak two months ago talked about the danger of unwanted entrance. And what he meant by that is, you know, who knew what the new iPad was going to do? how it was going to change things. Who knew what the new iPhone 5 was going to do? Who knew, who knows what Samsung or Nokia or anybody is going to do? 
And these are put in the hands of people like you and me every day, and we, we learn to work, live, and play on them. Mm -hmm. And then we used to, we learned to bring those, the strengths of those devices to, to work, to the workplace. And if, and if the CIO can't accommodate that, you're gonna have what some people call rogue IT operations. Yep. Well, rogue maybe yes. If, you, if there's a rogue, you have to ask yourself, why is it rogue? Mm -hmm. Who, look in the mirror maybe and see why it's rogue. And be able to have a network, a, a cloud, an environment that can not eliminate risk because there's never going to be that, that absolute, but reduce the risk of using these new devices and empower the people in the company or in the defense department or whatever to use that information sharing tool and um, for business productivity. Benefit, increase okay. productivity. And I, I think if CIOs stick to them the way they've done business for many, many years, that is simply not going to be the way it is. Well, John, on behalf of the Center for Digital Strategies, I'd like to thank you for You're joining welcome. us today. We You're really welcome. appreciate your thoughts and insights. Thank you. Uh, this has been Jeff Matei for the Center for Digital Strategies. Thank you.